Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago and beyond, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way, we bring critical thinking, skepticism, and silliness to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes it across the ocean. I'm going to run across the ocean <laughs> right now. It's skeptical. <laughs> it's some bullshit. And there is no welcome ad. Today is our silly show. You're listening to this on uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday, I think, Thursday, which would be the 14th, the next, if I'm not yeah, totally the 14th. fucking it's nuts. The 14th. Seven days from now. So. We're recording this on the 7th. Yeah. And Cecil, I got to tell you, I just want to set this aside. I love this part of our new program. I do too. I like do it, too. this part brings a, like an irrepressible <laughs> adolescent joy to me. <laughs> Even finding the stories. Uh, like Haley has... has, has is she's on a complete news moratorium. She's not watching any of it. She's a fucking boycotting anything serious because she just can't do it right now. But she will find these stories for me sometimes. Nice. She'll send me, she'll be like, I saw this crazy shit. It'd be great for your silly news show. And she'll send this to me. Nice. Because it's just a joy. Yeah. It's just a fucking joy. Yeah. This, I love it. This one in particular, where the person is like, got a fucking hamster ball and they're trying to run across the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the story comes from the <laughs> Miami New Times. Florida extreme athletes transatlantic hamster wheel expedition <laughs> thwarted by Coast Guard. Guys, yeah. not for the first time. <laughs> not for the first time. More than one there's, time. There's been more, there's been more than one transatlantic hamster wheel expedition thwarted by the Coast Guard time. By from this one guy. <laughs> this guy keeps building fucking hamster wheels. And this then, feels like a mad lib. It genuinely yeah, it feels does. like a mad lib. It feels like feels like there was a lot of adjectives in front of something. Let's play mad libs. Okay. All right, Cecil. Uh, I'm gonna need the name of let me see, an animal. Okay. And a <laughs> shape and a US agency. <laughs> can you can you give me sure a porcupine triangle department of justice? Florida Extreme Athletes <laughs> Transatlantic Porcupine Wheel ex Porcupine Expedition uh, thwarted by Department of Justice. <laughs> it's just as believable. It's, it's not more nonsensical. It's just as believable. It's not more nonsensical. I love believable. it. I fucking yeah. love it, Cecil. Oh, it's super good, dude. Cecil, let him go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did He's, you see him in this thing? Did you watch the video? I didn't watch the video, no. So, you know me. Look I, at this guy. I, I, no. This is day one. Um, he looks good, by the way. Day one. Last night, to stay here at Atlantic Ocean. Ugh. I want to show you uh, what's going on in the hydro part. Uh, so this, this is uh, my fishing gear. This is for survival jacket is here. You can see this is the link solar. So I don't understand. I Wouldn't it just sit there? Like, how does it roll? He's got I, a run in it. But I know, but like. And then it's got like little like ruddery things. <laughs> well, this like a, could like a, possibly go. He wants to, guys, you Come guys, on, he wants man. to go from Miami to London. You couldn't get across a bathtub in that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What do you think this fucking if machine you, tops out at? If you put this in a pool, you could swim circles around it before it got to the other side. All you have to do is be in front of it and go. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Let Come him go. On. The that Coast Guard. That thing's 100% full of coke. There's no <laughs> way. There is no way. Uh, this guy must be 100% full of coke. <laughs> he wants and to our, run across the ocean. <laughs> the uh, Coast Guard is like, look, this is aggressively dangerous. <laughs> this is super unsafe. We're not allowing you to do this. And, and every time they confront this guy, and he's, he's like, just like, look, I'll kill myself if you don't yeah, let no, me do it. They literally held knives to his own throat or whatever yeah. for hours because they were. They said, we're going to board and take you out of there. He said, no, you won't. And he like, pretend, he like held a knife to his own throat. This is why the Coast Guard is to a person populated with better people than me, <laughs> right? Because if somebody's like, I'll kill myself if you don't let me kill myself, I'd be like, you know what, bro? Have the fuck out. I'll tow you a little further out to sea Here. just so you can't walk back. You dumb motherfucker. Like, you're gonna pop your fucking hamster wheel with your dumb knife. I am telling you, man, this is one of those stories, though. When I saw it, I thought, come on, this can't be real. That's because so there's funny. some of these that happen where you see it and you're like, come on, that's not real. That's like an AI thing. <laughs> there's no way somebody's running in the ocean like that. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> running around in a Cecil, circle? Picture this. You're on a, a merchant marine ship and you're just doing your merchant marine, Lulu, Lu, Lu, merchant marining. <laughs> merchant today, marine stuff. Right? And then, like, you look out and you're like, 
what ho across the starboard bow, <laughs> as one might say if one was a merchant marine. And you look and there's just some fucking exhausted Iranian moving at like a third of a mile an <laughs> a third hour. Of a mile an hour. <laughs> Every once in a while he just falls and spins with it for a second and keeps going. I love it if like a whaling ship came up and chased him down. <laughs> He's trying to furiously <laughs> run away from and they're like shooting harpoons <laughs> at him trying to get it through the hole. They're like boom, boom. And he's just running as fast as he can. A couple of orcas start like uh, batting him around oh, like a beach ball. They can take him places all around. They like start migrating with him. They're pulling him all over the place. It'd be the best. Oh this my is the God. funniest shit I saw a week. I couldn't believe this. I have been trying my whole life to get off the fucking hamster wheel. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this guy is working so hard to get in the goddamn thing. I feel like thing. such a fucking Black Mirror episode. <laughs> God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this story is just adorable. Uh, I don't know, man. What's not adorable it about this? It feels ableist. Go ahead. All right. So... <laughs> So the worst part of this story is is not probably what you think. This story oh, I know from, I know the worst part of this story. You probably do. I USA do. Today. Watch as three-legged bear named Tripod busts into mini fridge in <laughs> Florida, on. downs white claws. <laughs> this, by the way, was a black bear drinking white claws. Uh, gross. That's uh, the worst part of the story is the white claw. Uh, by there, was far. A, there was a meme the other day that I saw, uh, and it it was talking. It showed something like. Zennials and their, uh, uh, what is it, alcoholic seltzer or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then it, and then it's and then it showed a Zima bottle, <laughs> and it showed the guy's face from Lord of the Rings. He said, "I was there two thousand years ago." <laughs> Did you drink Zima? You ever have? I've one? had some Zimas. Yeah, yeah. it tasted like. Uh, remember the soda Fresca? Yeah, it tasted like yeah. boozy Fresca. Yeah, it was like slightly boozy. So I turned when I turned twenty one. Zimas just hit the market. Oh. right. And I was like a stoner kid or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, like I was just a, you know, long haired, goofy kid. But I, and I drank a lot of beer and other shit when we were kids. So whatever you get a hold of when you're a kid is what you is get. What you're drink, That's what yeah. you get, right? Yeah. So it doesn't like- You're not you're, drinking your drink you're of preference. Not, you're not discerning at all. You're just, you just see a thing and you just like, whatever it is, I'm just yeah. going to hoover it down. So if it's Boone's Farm, it's Boone's Farm. Right. If it's, if somebody happened to have an, a, a, a fucking- 40 ounce of Mickey's or whatever in sure. a plastic Boom. bag, Done. you're going to drink that. It doesn't matter what it is. And so I remember growing up and going through phases where people would sort of pitch their money in and, and you would either get the cheapest beer or the cheapest malt liquor or whatever it was. Right. But once I turned 21, I had a choice because I didn't have to just rely on somebody else to get the thing. For right. me, I could buy it for myself. And my for my 21st birthday, we my, my, uh, my brother took me to, uh, uh, took me to Las Vegas. Oh, wow. And so we went that's to Las a great, Vegas. It was that's great. That's a great trip. Yeah, it paid, but I paid for myself. Yeah, but still, still it was great. Cool. It was great. Yeah. And we went walking around Las Vegas, hanging out and, you know, went to the casino and drank a bunch of stuff. They didn't have Zimas because I liked, I liked yeah. Zima, right? Because it tastes good. It tasted good. That's the thing. It didn't it taste bad. Fun. It yeah. tasted, it had a it's sweet refreshing. flavor. It's like a, it's like a wine cooler. Yeah. Like it, it's like a wine cooler. Like if you Which, like wine coolers, you probably like a Zima. Look, I would drink a wine cooler right now. Yeah, They're, wine coolers they, are great. My I, dad used to occasionally have. A I wine like wine cooler. coolers. I'm not like, like I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't. It's I I, I like cider, and in, in my opinion, I like cider. Cider better. is better. I like cider better, but I recognize you know the draw of those other things that are you know the margarita in a can or whatever yeah. it is. They have a lot more choice nowadays than they did when we were younger. And when better we were younger, choices, yeah. We like they only had you know a couple of different things that were relatively sweet. Some of them were horrifying. Boone's Farm's terrible. That's not. I a don't good, think I've ever had. That's Boone's not Farm. a good wine. It's just a really sweet, overly sweet wine. Mad Dog 2020 is the same thing. It's very, very sweet sort of wine. You drink it, you're going to throw up and you're going to get hung over like crazy from it. But uh, but I remember the Zimas, drinking a lot of these Zimas, they were like $20 a piece back in the day. Jesus they were expensive. Christ. Um, and I wanted one when we went to the, to the casino because you're at the casino. Yeah. And back then... I don't know how I don't I, I don't go to Vegas so I don't know and I don't I don't certainly don't spend any time in a casino if I'm there so the times I've been I haven't hung out in the casino I don't know if they still bring you drinks I don't either because I don't I like Vegas a yeah. lot but I don't go to you the casino. casinos but in any case I wound up like there and being like okay well I, you know they come by because you're playing roulette or whatever you're playing and they would say can I get you a drink and then you would order but they didn't have anything like that they really just had like 
four beers that you could right. order and then maybe like a gin and tonic or something. And I wasn't drinking mixed drinks back then. So I would have never yeah. picked anything like that. So the whole time I was like, well, I guess I'll just buy a steam. <laughs> Cause I didn't want the free Bud Light or right. whatever. I didn't want the free Bud Light. But yeah, I, 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 I have not tried any of the alcoholic seltzers. All right. So I've tried a few. Uh, high noon is okay. I like seltzer, by the way. I, I like too. seltzer. I do too. No, I, so yeah. like I'm down. Yeah. I like seltzers. I like sodas. Yeah. Like I like that kind of stuff. Like I'm, I like carbonated and I'll just drink like an unsweetened seltzer very happily. So I like seltzers. I just think White Claw tastes bad. It's just like, it's kind of got like a shitty, bitter, mean spirited sort mean, of flavor to it. It tastes like, it tastes like sucking on a trailer park. Yeah. It's just gross, yeah. man. It's, <laughs> ugh, ugh. <laughs> No, it's bad. It's I bad love, for this bear. Can I just say there's a three-legged bear that's named Tripod, and that's I adorable. fucking love it. That's super adorable. It's so cute. That's super adorable. It's so cute. And the mini fridge, by the way, that the bear ripped apart is a kegerator. Yeah. Is so, it a keg of... That's a keg in there. Is it a keg of White Claw? No, they just had some cans oh, of White okay. Claw probably stacked around oh, the kegerator. Okay. Yeah. So, but I love, like, because we've had a couple of these stories now where the bears are like, I know where the booze is. <laughs> Bears be boozing. That's what I learned. <laughs> Bears be boozing. I I would would have never guessed that that would be the case, right? That they would go after, but it makes sense. It's yeah, calories. It's a lot of yeah, calories. It's calories. And I have seen like viral video of like when bears eat uh, berries that become fermented. Oh yeah, and they'll get all drunk and no they shit. stagger around. Yeah. And it's like I'm a drunk bear, and you're like, do they yeah, fight ooh. each other with their shirt off? <laughs> It is Florida. That happens this with happen bears in here yeah, in Chicago. Right? <laughs> That's only if Green Bay bears yeah. are also in the same area. So, <laughs> Okay, Tom, this got sent to us by 60 different people. So we have to we talk. Have to. We have to talk about it. So I got personal message this like three <laughs> times this week. All right. This story comes from everywhere there's anywhere news. Anywhere you've ever seen. Atlanta flight forced to come back after Flyer has diarrhea, quote, all the way through the plane. That's a lot Pilot of diarrhea. says. That's I'm a lot of diarrhea. It. That's just a gonna, lot of diarrhea. Go this ahead. is a bad day. This really is. Uh, yeah. This is, oof. This is skid marks on the runway. You know what this is? This is one of those Starbucks aliados. <laughs> skid, skid marks on the ramp. <laughs> Have you seen that aliado drink? Is that the one with the, with the olive oil? Olive oil. You, where, you, where you shit yourself while There's you're drinking no it? no way. I, okay, this is the only Here's time I'm going to ask. Here's what we do. Let's do a day where we put ourselves on camera and we drink, and we drink these until one of us shits. <laughs> <laughs> I will win. <laughs> first, first one to shit loses. <laughs> I will lose. Both of us what we'll do is we'll, we'll hire a guy to put two toilets that have to oh, face each facing other. Facing each other? Facing, do you remember like a those, shit off. In like those weird like we fraternity houses yes. where they have like yes. no doors. No doors or anything. And you just, just like have to stare at your, shitting. You have to stare at your friend <laughs> while you shit. It's like one of those. It's a bonding it, moment. It sure you bond is. bond around the commode. Sure is. Thank God I never did that. Oh man, I remember walking into one of those places and I walked in and I was, I was with a friend of ours yeah. and we were on the other side. It was like, whatever university is by Iowa's border, but still inside, it's like Galesburg or something. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. a big university. And so we went there and there was a frat that his friend was I rem- I've seen and the so same we were room. hanging yep. out. And he's, I said, well, I got to piss. And he's like, it's upstairs. And I walk in and I'm like, this is the wrong room. <laughs> it, was just like, it was just toilets yeah. that just faced each other and they tore all the stalls out. Yep. So there's no privacy. And I was like, what in the sweet fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is... This is fucking Guantanamo Bay level that torture. Frat. I would shit the shower every day. Cecil, I was constipated for six weeks after seeing that bathroom. <laughs> I saw that bathroom. I clenched up you like had, a yeah. fucking diamonds. Yeah. You diamonds. A, you had my a friend. big boy in there <laughs> waiting to go. God. That, I, it's so funny. Visiting that same friend, like that was the first and really the only experience I had, like spending a weekend hanging out with frat guys. And I was like, there's no amount of money. Oh, I know. I would I would fail college with a smile on my face if I had to go there. Yeah. It was the worst weekend. I know. It's like, terrible. It terrible. It's, it's terrible. terrible. There, I don't understand the appeal yeah. of that experience. There was a friend of ours, uh, another friend of ours, who went to a small school here in, in Illinois. Mm-hmm. And 
he was sort of in our friend group. So I visited him multiple times with different people, Yeah. right? So I visited him with Jacob. I visited him with Mike. And this friend of ours name was Derek. And Derek was down in the middle of the That's state. That's what I was thinking. He was yeah. in the middle of uh -huh. the state. Uh, and so I visited him several times and he was in one of these like hee-haw fucking jock frats. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right? That were just a nightmare. And I remember going down there and they would have these big parties. And I just went down there to hang out with, with Derek and we would just shit bullshit because we were both philosophy majors. Right. And so we just talk about like what we were doing in school. And I was, I was traveling down there with other people who were philosophy majors. So like there was a lot of, you know, bullshit talking that was going yeah. on. There's a lot of bunch, a bunch of just bullshit talking that we were doing. And we did it face to face. And we hung out and it was a lot of fun. But whenever we'd go back to this fucking frat house, it was like, dude on a fucking chandelier and he's fucking another guy's pissing another guy's mouth. Yeah, and crazy like, shit. What is happening? What is happening I remember in your asking life? the same guy. I was like, why are you here? You're like a thousand times better than all the worst. It was the worst. Yeah. I, and I'm not saying that all frats are bad. I'm just saying the ones that I visited. Horrible. I can't imagine. Yeah, I guess there was another one because my ex-brother-in-law was in a frat down in Peoria and I like went into their frat house and I was like, I would, I didn't want to touch anything. Yeah, no, I, Like, yeah. I was just like, this well, is, so the thing like, is though, the, the thing is, is though, disgusting. if you put a bunch of just out of adolescent boys in a house, it's going to be disgusting. Just, it was it's going to be disgusting anyway, right? Like, you go to a frat house, it's probably going to be gross because they're dudes and yeah. they they probably just don't know how to clean up after don't themselves. don't do it. They haven't done yeah. it and they don't clean up after right. themselves and they're just like, okay, well, I'll just, now it's all shit right. and the whole house Everything is, is just coated full in like of garbage. Yeah, like yeah, and sticky then, like, cum. Like and, and, <laughs> but here's the thing though, like, I visited other people who were in college too and they're they were as a bunch of like dudes in a house that wasn't a frat. It was just like, yeah. they're just friends sure who got, and it was filthy, filthy. too. I yeah. mean, it was like beer cans all over the place, yeah. ashtrays falling all over, full of cigarettes. There's, you know, shit and garbage everywhere. And it's just like, it's filthy. And you're just like, dude, why do you live why like Why do you this? live in squalor? And the thing is, is like, like I, I, I kind of recognize why they do is because if one person does it, then they're always because no one else will do it. Right. Yeah. And so you're stuck being the guy, and it's, nobody wants yeah. to do it. And then there's this weird like machismo thing where you're like, I'm not going to do it because you're stupid. You yeah, don't right. ever do it. And you then guys they fight have to clean it. up. I'm not cleaning and up. And they fight yeah. about it. And so right. like that's probably why it turns like that is because it because all guys have to like dick measure all the all time, the time. When, when they're that age. They're like fit, like fit. But in any case. And if you're sitting on a commode facing someone, it's yeah. easier to do. <laughs> it is easier. <laughs> Let's get back to speed shitting here. So okay. we, were, we were talking about this plane. Yeah. So the story, it's something that most flyers probably believe would be unimaginable, but a Delta flight from Atlanta had to turn around Friday night after a person on board soiled themselves. Delta confirmed the flight DL-194 from Atlanta to Barcelona. They were going to go to Barcelona. If this happened over the Atlantic... Oh, my God. I uh, had to turn back because a passenger on board was having a medical issue. The flight was about two hours out when it had to turn Whoa, back. Oh, so they have four hours, two hours there and two hours back? Uh, That's four extra hours. Four plus hours. now they got to clean the plane and then you got to... Oh. Four hours just nasally drinking someone's shit. If I'm two hours in at that point, but get me to Barcelona. I'll just cut off my nose to spite my trip. <laughs> <laughs> in an audio transmission from the flight deck, posted on Twitter by an aviation enthusiast, the pilot said, this is a biohazard issue. We've had a passenger who's had di diarrhea all the way through the plane, so they want us to come back to Atlanta. What are they doing? What are you running around? <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're just bending over like a fucking, like the center in football or whatever, getting ready to shoot it everywhere. What is happening? <laughs> Look, I feel so bad for this guy, right? Or this gal, whoever it was. Like, it's got to be, you're like, oh, shit, for real shit. And like, you go and you try and you don't make it. And now you're just like, yeah, man, trailing I, I get shit it. I get it. Like, on your way be, back. Yeah, it'd be rough. That's a bad day. But like, now everyone on that plane knows you ruined their vacation. You know, you ruined their business trip. You ruined their trip back home to see their family. And the whole time you're sitting there for, for you're the guy sitting there. You got to sit in your own. You're sitting in your own dookie, hours, dude. For a couple hours. <laughs> I would, I would have gone in the bathroom. I would have locked that door. I'd have been like, we're landing the plane. And I'm in this bathroom. I'd have flushed myself down the <laughs> toilet. <laughs> no, you know, you know, the, the, the thing is, is like when I fly, <laughs> 
I don't drink liquids for 24 hours before I fly. Wait, what? I just don't, I, I'm kidding. I don't, but I don't, but like, <laughs> you go maybe, full camel. Maybe, uh, you know, I certainly, like if I'm, let's say I'm leaving in the, in the, at like one in the afternoon. By like 11, I have, I don't drink anything else. I'm done for drinking. Real. For real, I don't drink any. Cause I don't, I hate having to get up on the plane to like fight my way across. Cause there, I'm always, I'm always smashed. Yeah. I'm always like, yeah. Eh. And in order to just get up and move, it's always a fucking hassle to be like, I got to get up. And then I normally, like when I'm at home, I just go to the bathroom all the time. So like I'm, yeah, I'm sitting right. there and I'm at my computer. I'm like, oh, I kind of go to the bathroom and I'll just go to the bathroom. So I just don't have the, uh, the sort of camel like yeah, right. ability that I used to have, which was like, I'd be at work and then you'd work for like three hours. You'd be like, I kind of had to pee three hours ago. I should probably go. Yeah, I forgot about go. that. Right. Yeah. But now I don't because I'm just like, oh, I'm at home. I could just walk over and go to the bathroom. And so it's, I, I don't think about it. Right. And so when I travel, I'm always like, like now I'm stopping more often when I'm traveling for like two hours, I'll have to stop to go to the bathroom right. somewhere. And so my thought is, is like, I don't want to get up every hour and have to go to the bathroom like I yeah, do when I I'm at home. Yeah. So I just don't drink. I like basically dehydrate myself when I go on a plane and when they come around with the water, I'm like, yeah, I don't want anything. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be okay. And Whoa. then I, I normally just put myself to sleep. I normally just put myself to sleep. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'll just sleep through you it. Got, you got the fucking travel man. And so I'll just go to sleep. Yeah. But I, I genuinely don't, I don't take a drink when they come by. I normally wow. don't take a food when they come by. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm just gonna go to sleep. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to deal with the, the problem because Airplanes are hard to go to the bathroom. They're in. super hard. Like, I am a like regular. So like, I'm not like a big tall guy, but I'm like a reasonably broad. Sure. Like, it's like as a you try to like walk into the you got to walk in like sideways, hopping on Absolutely. one leg. I don't like, fit in there. Squ yeah. Like it's you like you got to squeeze in. You got to squeeze in. I can't imagine being any bigger. Yeah. Like I look at like some friends I have mine that are like bigger, bigger, and I'm like, how do you go anywhere? Yeah. Like they built they built the airplane for like tiny thirds of people. It's like, it's like if you're like, you could like zip your body in half. It's and send perfect, half your body. It's kind of bathroom. a perfect size for like my wife. My wife is kind yeah. of the perfect size. She's short. Right. And she's thin and, she's thin, and yeah. she doesn't, it doesn't, it, there's nothing. It's not like there's a, like when she sits in the seat, she sits in the seat. Right. And, and then, but when I sit in the seat, I fill the seat and a little bit of the side. Right. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I fill the seat and a little bit more and planes are just a pain in the ass to be on anyway. Yeah. And then trying to now manipulate because there's three rows. So either I'm on the aisle and if I'm right. on the aisle, I'll drink something because I can just get up whenever the fuck I want. So it doesn't matter. But if I'm not on the aisle, if I'm inside, no. Nah, man, no. I ain't doing that. I ain't fighting with this guy every two two seconds. I got to go to the bath because I'm going to have to go every two minutes. When you're picking seats, do you pick? Do you, what do you choose? What's so your? So I, I hate the aisle because I like to lean and go to sleep. Okay, yeah, right. And um, I just wish that there was every plane had a two seater. Two seaters on every like yeah, make them right. two across where there's right. like lanes or something or whatever. Instead of doing three seats with one lane, yeah, do two in the lane and a two in the middle or something, and that would be three better. Three is a weird configuration because you're never traveling with a, a third person. <laughs> I know, it's like so everybody's weird. traveling with like either singles or yeah. couples, couple singers or right? couples. Yeah, you're very rarely three of you traveling. Yeah, very very rare is that the configuration that you're choosing. So like. Double makes sense just socially. Yeah. And triple, you're like, cool, man. I remember when you and I flew to QED. Yeah, the first flew time, to Manchester. And you had the window and I had the center. I had the middle. And then there was a lady on the outside. And like, in order to like not take up any room, I'd like pull my shoulders in and just like sit. Yeah. And like, like we got out and I was like, oh, and I stretched and both of my shoulders just locked up. Like I had like cramps. In both of my shoulders, you had to, I was you like, had to totally the oh whole time. God, like, it was oh. horrible. It was terrible. It was that was such a, a rough flight. That was a genuinely rough flight. That Those were tough flight. flights. Yeah. yeah. There's also a, a, a like a strategy that single travelers do to pick like the middle seat in different places so that no one picks around them. That's smart. But planes are always full, so yeah. people do, and then they want to trade with them. So then they get their choice of which seat they want. They'll like. Uh, how they feel right. the day. So there's like a strategy to being a single traveler to like pick that middle seat. But what if like you're between a couple that don't like each other? <laughs> <laughs> what happens then? What do you do? You just got to deal with it. In the statement from Delta, a spokesperson said, our teams worked as quickly and safely as possible to thoroughly clean the airplane to get our customers to their final destination. We sincerely apologize to our customers for the delay and inconvenience to the travel plans. The flight ended up being delayed about eight hours before taking off again for Barcelona. Eight hours, 
Cecil. This was the person though? No, it's a different picture. Oh. I don't know why that picture is there. It's related news. Oh, but like, okay. It makes you think that they had to carry this like, person off. This person hurt their neck shitting? Yeah. I was like, what it's is probably happening? somebody that slipped and fell in it. I was like, whoa, no. But yeah, the, the, I couldn't imagine being on this flight. But I I really genuinely feel like if this is you, you just got to walk into the distance. <laughs> I know. Like, nah, I done. wouldn't get on the flight to I'd go like, to Barcelona. Oh, no. I'd the be next like, no, flight? I'm going home. I'm yeah, going to rent no. a car and shit in that. I, <laughs> <laughs> How was your trip? Shitty. It's a shitty trip. It's a shitty trip. It's shitty. Shitty trip. Shitty all around. <laughs> so I got to show, I got to put this one on the big screen. Go ahead and read it. Go ahead yeah. and read it. This comes from fox59.com. Court documents. Central man spread some love <laughs> by waving at passing cars while fully well, nude. Why was he waving though? <laughs> like, that's what and here's the best part about this. So, you know, you, he was airplaning. The, the story is a story, whatever. Maybe he's doing a propeller. Who knows what he was doing? He was waving at cars while he was nude. And then they ask him, there's some funny dialogue back and forth, uh, but, but they didn't put a shirt on him to take his shot. They just took it right without it. And he doesn't seem he doesn't seem affected. Although they the best part is is that like at a certain point, he's sitting there and while he's talking to the officer, the officer's like asking him questions and he just goes, Jeep, Jeep. And the officer looks and there's no Jeep. He just said, Jeep, Jeep. And then they found meth in his wallet. And that makes sense. It, Every, yeah. it all makes sense. The meth is the explanatory power it, for the entire it, it thing. It all makes sense when they found the meth in his wallet. I love wallet. the, like, when they go to this guy's house to confront him, he's got the door open and the windows open and the drapes pulled and he's fucking nude as the day is long. Yeah. And the, the officer's like, uh, yeah, hey, can you talk? And he's like, yeah. Do you want to put some clothes on? And the officer's like, yeah, I'd prefer that you put some clothes on. I, yeah, hey, well, we're going to arrest you. So you might want some drawers, you know? <laughs> You're 100% going to jail now. And so then you might want to put he some He puts drawers. on a shirt and comes out like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so fucking great, he's Cecil. In a, he's in a midriff red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he just comes out like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> He's got a fucking pail of honey. And he's <laughs> walking around like a naked ass bear. <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> uh, it would be great if he, he just puts on the shirt and comes out. Are you comfortable now? <laughs> His wife is Eeyore. She looks like Eeyore. <laughs> what do you tie the little ribbons on? <laughs> 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 oh, this guy had a good day. <laughs> okay, so this this one again was so much for the so much for the for the big screen today. This is something else. This is Haley sent me this one. This story comes from uh, WZZM thirteen. Uh, thirteen is on your side, by the way. Police stop Nebraska man for bucking the law <laughs> 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 with a bull riding shotgun in his car. Guys, if you're just listening to this show, you got to go to the show notes. You got to go to the show notes. This guy's got like, like a Ford Taurus. You know, he's got like a, a 97 Taurus. Ford Taurus. A like that's Taurus. what it looks like, right? This is, is like it Taurus the bull. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. It is. It is. <laughs> Ford Taurus. <laughs> Please be a Ford Taurus. <laughs> Please be a Ford Taurus because that just fix. That's the oh fucking bow God. on everything if it's a Ford Taurus. So this guy's got a fucking, just like a, he does, he has a regular just Ford of some kind. Yeah, it's a Taurus. It's, we've, we've decided. It's a Taurus. And he's got the passenger seat that he's like busted out. Then he put like a cattle gate on the yeah. passenger side. And then he's got a goddamn enormous steer. This a is fucking not like 1,200 pounds. It's not a small steer. Like giant I'll, I'll, horned. I'll, I'm going to play a little bit of this video. It's a now, fucking aura. Now, people who aren't watching, you won't be able to see exactly what's happening. But it's a guy driving down the road. And this, this uh, when I say this animal is easily as big as the part of the car it's in, I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'm not, there's, I'm not, I'm not like exaggerating. This isn't hyperbole for effect. This is literally an animal that if it was standing next to the car, it would literally take up the space that it is sitting in, in that car. Oh, see, so I think it is every bit as wide as the car, because if I'm looking at it, that you should have a wide load sign. Yeah. Like, I'm not even yeah. kidding. You should tie a red flag to one of his fucking horns. <laughs> Both of his horns. <laughs> because it's it's overlapping by three feet, the it's passenger side of the car. It's fucking huge. And the passenger side of the car is all fucking weighed down. One thing I don't understand, what does it say on the back here? So he drives by. 
And as he drives by, does that say lice? It does say lice. <laughs> what is? And it says it on the side of the car. What is hat? And then it says dial oh, nine. Oh, police. police. He, it's an old police car. It's an old car. police car. So it's a Ford <laughs> so Crown he, Vic. So he took it off. And it just made it he say just lice. Made it say lice <laughs> instead of police? <laughs> Well, that's not that's better. kind of hilarious. That's actually. not better. It's more accurate. They're both fucking pests. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his license plate says "boy and dog," <laughs> but he doesn't have a dog. He's got a twelve hundred pound steer. Well, and the named is, Howdy Doody, by the way. And, and this this fucking animal is huge, and its horns are enormous. Enormous. And on the front of the car, yeah. he has a set of horns. <laughs> and I wonder if he's trying to send a message to the bull. <laughs> He seriously got a set of horns that are of a cow on the front. And then there's this giant horned animal that's sort of looking at him nervously. <laughs> so, like, I want to read some of this stuff from this article sure. directly. Videos of Lee Meyer driving Howdy Doody around can be found online from 2017 and 2019. Rhonda Meyer told US 92 that, quote, Lee thinks he's a movie star after the video of his traffic stop went viral, but that he's also a little shy. Meyer said Howdy Doody is like a member of the family now, but she wasn't always wild about how much money her, money her husband spent on the bull over the years. The amount of money he spent on this whole darn project between the car and the bull, I could have had myself a brand new kitchen. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> it's literally just to drive a bull around? Just to bullshit around. <laughs> God. It's ridiculous. <laughs> How do you get the bull in, Cecil? Like, it's got to want it. It's got to want to get in. What do you lead a bull like with hay? I don't like, what? Know. like if it's like a dog, you put treats there. Like, is there like treats for a bull? <laughs> I don't know. How do you get the bull in the car the first time? Imagine doing you give all him, that like, work. A carrot or something? <laughs> or a stick? <laughs> or a stick. I think yeah, it's, it's, it's one or either the other. One. It's either one. Yeah. There's got to be a moment where that bull had never been in the car. <laughs> And then you finish building out the car. And then the bull's like... And you're like, yeah. I hope this works yeah. or I'm going to feel stupid. I, w I wonder if the if he enjoys it. Even because you take dogs and dogs yeah. really like being in the car and like sticking their head out the side. Yeah. And he's got his whole body out the side. Yeah, what's he thinking? So I wonder if he likes it or not. I don't he, know. I always wonder about shit like I this. I wouldn't want him to freak out in the middle of like a fucking, like a traffic jam Dude, or something. What if it like... That's like a... Yeah. Yeah. What if literally anything goes yeah. wrong? That's you a, have 1,200 pounds of angry... Have you ever seen the movie Tommy Boy where that deer gets in that car? <laughs> I Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's long time ago. old time. movie, but like there's a scene where like they get the, they hit this deer and they think it's dead and they put it in the car and the deer wakes up. Mm -hmm. And the deer just like fucks the car up because it's a wild animal sure. that's panicking in yeah. this car. Yeah. If you get a 1,200 pound steer that just like... And it, it's tied down, but the rope looks so weak. It, it looks so like just... Perfunctory. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder too when like people do this shit with like animals, like their brains cannot possibly process what's happening. I know, right? You know? Like they didn't evolve to understand yeah. what a fucking Ford Crown Victoria was. Yeah, they have no like idea. they don't have any idea. They like they're no on the idea. expressway and they're just like, I, I was supposed to be in a field somewhere. I'm supposed to be in a field somewhere. <laughs> what, is what the fuck is that? Bugs are hitting it in the yeah, eyes and right. shit. Yeah, it's all pissed off. It's, right. getting, it's slowly getting madder and madder <laughs> as more and more bugs fly up its what nose the shit is as it's going down the road. <laughs> doesn't even have a helmet on. It it's doesn't. ridiculous. Dangerous. Doesn't have a seatbelt. It's in the front seat of the car, too. We should have a five point harness. That little rope's not going to stop I'm it. I'm going to Bovine University. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fucking badass looking bull though. Those it horns are something else. Something man. That is something else. <laughs> this is the this story is the apocalypse. This is from the Daily Beast. I uh -huh. grabbed this story because this is just I don't remember. I remember we read Revelation, and I don't know which one this is. <laughs> but this has to be it's one. Not, of, it's not locusts in armor. It's yeah. radioactive yeah. pigs. Why ra why highly radioactive wild pigs wreak havoc in Germany, Tom? What do you call, what's the name? What would you call your radioactive pig? Oh, I already have a name. I don't know. Niels Bohr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Right. Oh, that's good. All right, so here's the deal. There are wild boars mm -hmm. fucking shit up in the wilds of Germany. Sure. And they are highly radioactive because the food that they eat, they eat like truffles and shit. And I guess truffles just like truffles themselves accumulate radioactive material. So like when there's like bomb testing, then, you know, that radioactive material goes up into the atmosphere and then it disperses, it falls down, 
but some organisms, for whatever reason, just div- hold on to just, it. They hang on to yeah. it. And that happens to be like a primary food source for these goddamn wild boars. So like at some point they're going to gore somebody, Cecil, and that person's going to get boar powers. <laughs> That's how this works. We're going to be watching across the Boraverse movies. A hundred percent. What is your power? Like oh. you just create a bunch of kids. <laughs> like what's your power? You root you're around just, in garbage. Like you're just awesome at finding truffles, yeah. <laughs> which find, make you radioactive. To be honest though, that's not a bad power. Doesn't I didn't realize, I didn't realize. Truffles I had, now? I had no idea that that's what happens with truffles. I didn't, it didn't occur. I never, I never heard that before. And so I wonder if eating truffles is even good for you. Yeah. I, I, I seriously, I read this and I was like, uh, do, they, do they inordinately eat? I mean, granted, when you order truffles in a restaurant, you're eating almost. You're nothing. you're getting the tiniest weffa thin right. bit of truffle. They're they're shaving it. There's a specific uh, machine made for it's like a mandolin, but made for truffles to be as thin as possible. Right, right? it's a specific. You're getting made micron for it level because truffles. You're, yeah, you're getting you know it's like a fucking scalpel in there. It's surgical steel to try to cut it as thin as possible because one because it's overpowering. It's an it overpowering. Very Too much pungent. truffles immediately. It's disgusting. terrible, but it, it it it's an overpowering type of food, and it's also exceedingly expensive. So they don't want to give you a lot. You also don't need a lot. Right. And so they can charge you a lot for a little and they're going to do it. And so they'll give you the tiniest little bit of waffle thin truffle and you'll get it on your plate or in your oils or whatever right. it is. So maybe it's that we just don't take a bite out of truffles. Maybe right. it's that we just like, you know, it's like, you know, uh, fucking gold schlager where, yeah, you ate, you drank some gold, but it's the tiniest, it's such yeah. a, a tiny it amount of gold. It's, it's fucking infinitesimal. But like these pigs are walking around like eating x-ray machines. Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> they're, like those, they're like those guys who found that fucking MRI machine in Brazil yeah, yeah, or whatever. Right. <laughs> Instead of running around. What was that? What like was rolling in the, uh, in, in the cesium or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> what was they the were name? like painting themselves What was the it? name of that? It was, a, it was, uh. Start with a G, didn't it? The Goyana experiment yes. or whatever it was. Goyana, that was what That's it was. That's what it was. I remember now. Yeah, we're, that, that was a that was one of the first citation neededs we ever yep. did where somebody finds a, a just a, some kind a, some of kind medical of machine, lab like some machine. sort of medical machine, some sort of yeah, x-ray or some sort of machine. And they take the cesium out of there <laughs> and they started painting things with it because yeah. they thought it was the glow in the dark and it was cool. And it, I mean, granted. <laughs> I'm sure it was. It was sure it was cool. And they didn't fucking but know. But unfortunately, it was also hot. It was also super fucking. <laughs> and I also wonder too, like, <clears throat> not only is this stuff, but, you know, you're in Europe. And so there's fallout from. Uh, not only the tests that went on in Europe, yeah, right? And in Asia, Chernobyl. right? And then also Chernobyl. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's fallout. I'm sure there's got to be something from that. Although I know that they tried to do their best to contain it. I don't know exactly how much got out, but they, they, you know, there's some of it I'm sure did. I don't know how much got out either, but now I'm like, yeah, but like we didn't drop nuclear bombs anywhere in Germany. No. And yet the radioactive fallout has concentrated enough yeah. To create highly radioactive so, wild boar. So it's got to be. It's got to be. Fuck. Yeah, I, I wonder about the reporting on this. I, I'm sure it's probably shit report. When they say highly radioactive, like if an animal is actually highly, it dies. Yeah. Right. Like it just it's it's it would die. It would its DNA would start to fucking break down. Like yeah. so highly radioactive is I'm sure very relative term. Right. Yeah. It's probably highly radioactive. It might also to be that, that they can not. control too. Well, like get more of it than we can or right. something too. Yeah. There's a possibility That's very, there very possible too. too. Um, but you know, you just don't know how much is out there. But I, I, it, it, I don't know, and I will look up to see if it is concentrated in truffle now because I don't know if that's yeah. the case. Like that's an interesting. I don't want to eat a PET scan or whatever. <laughs> like fuck that. <laughs> eat a truffle and it's just like showing your skeleton from the inside. <laughs> we're gonna get banned from YouTube because they think we're talking this is medical Jesus misinformation Christ. now. Uh, okay. Well, all right. So we had fun this week. <laughs> it's late. We got the giggles, but, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna have a regular show on Monday and then a live stream this next Thursday. So the 21st, it's the 14th today, the 21st, come back next Thursday, 9 PM central. You can come hang out with us. We're going to be doing a fun show uh, that it'll be live and we'll have people there that we're interacting with. Last time we had a great time talking to chat. Time. We hadn't talked to chat in a long time. So we're going to talk to chat and hang out. So come hang out with us and enjoy the evening. Uh, this upcoming Thursday, the 21st, 9 p.m. Central, uh, Facebook 
and uh, I think it's Facebook. I don't know. It, don't think, and actually, it might not be Facebook anymore. It definitely is YouTube and Twitch, though. I know that for sure. So come to those places, and you'll be able to hang out with us. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, we're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death in towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques, and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, vaccine nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, doublespeak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.